Time now to get to some health news. We know it's February, right? Long past when many of us gave up on those New Year's resolutions. Well, if yours was to lose a little weight, shed a few pounds and get healthy, you still got time, OK? As I am each Thursday, I'm joined now by Dr. David Winter from Baylor Scott and White Health. Good morning, Dr. Winter. Good morning, Tachara. Good to be with you. Always good to have you. We know exercise, right, is good for all of us. Tell us how it can best be utilized to help those who want to lose weight. Yeah, Tashara, so exercise increases your metabolism, burns calories, and can help you lose weight. Now, you want exercise that stimulates your circulation. So walking, jogging, treadmill is fine, rowing machines, swimming, those elliptical trainers work. You want to do it so you're at least slightly short of breath. That burns up the calories. When you do it also may make a difference. Studies have shown that if you do it in the morning, your body is more uh, inclined to increase metabolism. So you get a little bit of advantage if you do it then rather than the afternoon or evening. And I got to tell you, the difference is just a little bit. So if you like exercise in the evening, any exercise that you do is better than no exercise at all. So anytime you want to do it, Tashara. I was just about to say, Dr. David, when you got to help me out a little bit because I'm always in the evening because of how early we have to be here in the morning. Let's talk about the types of It'll food, work. of course, yes. that we uh, mm -hmm. choose. Which ones are optimal for assisting with that weight loss? Yeah, here's the deal. So protein is slowly absorbed and slowly digested, so it stays in your body longer and you're not hungry for a longer period of time as opposed to sugars, sweets, and simple carbohydrates. So take breakfast, for example. A couple donuts may fill you up, make you feel good, but it's not uncommon a couple hours later you're hungry again. So better choices are Greek yogurt, cottage cheese, eggs. They'll last longer and keep the hunger down for a longer period of time. Drinking water can also help. Now, it's interesting because you think water, well, it keeps you hydrated. That's a good thing. It also helps with circulation, may decrease appetite a bit, may increase your metabolism a bit. So what's recommended is five to seven big glasses of water a day. That helps in a lot of different ways, Tashara. There you go. Let's talk about brain function. This is something I'm always interested to learn more about. How can we enhance our minds? A lot of studies have been coming out the last several years that say if we exercise our brains, it's as important as exercising our muscles. Focus exercise can make a big difference for both. Now, what we're talking about here are things that challenge different parts of your brain. For example, crossword puzzles, Sudoku, brain games, those help one part of your brain. Socialization, interacting with other people, interacts with another part of your brain, that helps that. New challenges, picking up the game of tennis, pickleball, dance lessons, another part of the brain. So you want to stimulate your brain in many different ways. They can make a difference. Also, resting the brain is very important. Sleeps, good sleep habits, very important for your brain. Also, taking rest periods during the day, just minor breaks where you maybe you sit in a quiet room and focus on your breathing. That rest can, calms down the brain. That can also help. So taking care of a brain is as important as taking care of our muscles. The older we get, the more important <laughs> these two things are. I tell you what, that last part, I feel like you were talking directly to me, even though I know we have a whole lot of people watching. Um, <laughs> we've heard that uh, chocolate can be good for us, and newer studies, though, are reporting that chocolate may actually be bad for us. What do you say to that? Well, chocolate has flavonoids in it, and those are good for you. They have anti-inflammatory, antioxidant properties. They can actually drop your blood pressure a bit, improve circulation. But the problem with chocolate in a candy bar, there's a lot of fats and uh, things that aren't so good for you and those things. So candy bars aren't so good, but chocolate actually is. Now, you may be referring to Shara's studies that say that some chocolate has lead and cadmium, two metals in it. That's not good. Now, I researched this, and it actually is a small amount. There's a small amount of those two leads, uh, lead and cadmium metals in other things, a lot of processed foods. So our body can handle small amounts of that. Too much is not good. So like anything with chocolate, anything else, Moderation is a key. A little right. bit goes a long way. There you go. Dr. David Winter, always good to have you on Thursday mornings. Thanks for joining us again.